Hey, I'm Claire Cooley. This is the Creativity Show. I'm so happy you're here. It's a beautiful day. And today we're going to continue a creative project that will incorporate stencils into it uh, that I call Essence of Everything. It's based um, or inspired by the four seasons. And each of the seasons has a primary color, a metal, a botanical, uh, an element, an animal, and the art that's on the floor that I'm going to work on in front of the camera today, and the kimonos that were done with the stencils that um, are available one after another, they're coming out. I now have a Patreon where my Patreon members get access to all the stencils as they come out uh, with no extra fee or people can purchase one at a time. Uh, but the Patreon $5 a month uh, is really a deal because there's 10 stencils out now. And instead of paying $4 a piece for each stencil, you get all 10 and they're just going to keep coming out. No extra fee to, to print any that you want with your, with your, uh, cricket or your other, uh, cutting machines. Yes, Bo. Um, in, in one moment, we're going to start a time lapse of me getting this to this point and then I'm going to continue in front of you but I want to speak just a little bit about why I'm doing this is as a little girl in a very challenging upbringing with lots of chaos I found this place of serenity in creative reverie and that's what I want to share with you and not just because it um, makes me happy and it's something that I believe and I've seen help others heal, enhance their lives. But for the world, we need our creativity to solve the issues in the world and to heal ourselves and each other, our relationships, our communities, the world, the live in balance with the environment. So. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, when schools were set up to train people to get good jobs and make good money working in the factories and production places, which is all good, but it left the arts out of schools and that has continued. I didn't fit in. I knew at very young in life, I didn't really fit in. I wasn't comfortable. I didn't feel safe. I needed to move to be happy. And I believe that, you know, they've proven if we move, our brains work better. And some of us are kinesthetic learners like myself, visual kinesthetic. So the school system uh, marginalizes people like us. And like I said, creativity having greater access to our imaginations, more confidence to express our creativity and more courage to share it with others and the world makes the world a more peaceful place, a happier, healthier place. So that's what this is all about. And I really appreciate it. If you share this, we're doing grassroots growing it. I'm doing it because people asked me to, like I wrote my memoir, because people said my stories helped them and they would help other people and you should write your life story. And I've been through some stuff. We all have. There's no reason to compare whose stuff was tougher. And, and it's what we do with what we've gone through that defines us, not what we go through. So um, Incandescence, Rising Above Darkness is my memoir that talks about what, very honestly, what I've been through and that I have used it as fuel for creative expression. So I have no regrets about any of it, even the toughest stuff I've been through. 
And we can all do that. We can take our tough stuff and turn our our adversity into our advantage by making it into art. And by sharing it with others, we can take out any sadness, negativity, any regret because we're helping others with it. So there's only good. And that's what it's about for me is finding the good in everything, even the hardest or especially the hardest stuff. So there we go. And uh, you could start the, the video of me getting this art to this point. It's, a, it's a, obviously a time lapse. So winter is blue, spring is green, summer is yellow, autumn is red, the primary colors, winter is silver, spring is bronze, summer is gold, autumn is copper, winter, the element is air, Spring is water, summer is earth, autumn is fire, winter, it's going to be an evergreen branch, spring, it's going to be flower, summer, it's going to be grasses, autumn, it's going to be a maple leaf. And so I'm going to work on this in front of you and as soon as this live stream is done. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna incorporate some of my stencils. Yes. Uh, Joni B said, excellent. Thank you so much, Joni. I, I love it to know that you're here. I call these virtual visits because it, I really feel connected to you when I know you're there and um, during this period that we all did some social distancing, it turned into a social experiment for me and for Bodhi, my son. And we haven't gotten in a vehicle or gone into another building other than uh, getting immunized and some dental work in the beginning, gotten into any, uh, any vehicles. Uh, we've only used our feet to get out and walk every day. And it turns out that what I thought before COVID, that I needed to drive places and do things to be happy. No, um, I, need, I do need to feel connected to you, I, but I'm okay to only go where my feet can take me and make a much simpler life. Yes. Michael B said, we are all here, Mom. Hey, Michael. Nice you're there. Uh, I feel you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, when this live stream is done, you want to come out and, and we'll get going on essence of everything. The four kimonos. We have the winter cranes, spring fish, summer dragonflies, autumn deer and uh, these kimonos will be worn during the performance piece which is what this is all about is doing a performance piece where while the inspired spoken word inspired by each of the four seasons the kimono is worn these smaller um, quadriplets Dicks. <laughs> How do you say that word? Quad Quadriptics. Quadriptics um, are more like tests. I did one big test that I've shared before, and now these, and for the performance piece, I'm going to paint them live, and then they're going to be the set, do the spoken word, and then that's going to be edited live by Bodhi, the, the technically facile um one and then the spoken word and there will be some bamboo flute and percussion and it'll turn into music that then will be used as a choreography for the last movement which will be 
dance and hopefully on roller skates. So the impetus for this, um, the inspiration besides nature and the four seasons is that we can express ourselves creatively any way we like. And I have uh, some assets in life. I've also got some some areas I need to work on like everyone else. One of my assets is I started very young to seek my own inner approval. Did it feel right? Did it feel good for me instead of waiting for the outside world to approve of me? So I am fortunate in that I can flow creatively in any direction I choose, whether it's music or art or clothing design or jewelry or home decor or writing. I, I give myself permission to keep learning and keep experimenting and just enjoy the process. And nothing feels like I have to prove anything to anyone else. I don't have to uh, measure it as a success or failure against anyone else's yardstick. If I learn something, if I enjoy doing it, it's a success. So. So what I'm doing now, I've never done before. So let's get going with it. You ready? Yes, let me uh, enable camera angle number two. And Bodhi, uh, who is the, <laughs> the uh, technically, the technical artist, and I'm the hands-on artist, uh, I'm so grateful, honored that he asked me to work with him and named us Mother Son Productions. And so we do these productions. He do, he's Bodhi the Movie Maker YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is, or our YouTube channel is uh, The Creativity Show. Yes. Which piece of art are you planning to start with? Um, to make sure it's in the frame. Why don't we work from left to right? I find that for some reason, even though I was born in the desert in this country and my ancestry is uh, European, um, probably not any Native American blood, um, but my father said we did, and, uh, and I hope we do. I've never been tested, uh, done the DNA test, but he, he didn't usually tell the truth. so. It could be that I don't have Native American blood, but you know, we all go back to the same origin, um, even pre-human. And uh, sometimes I feel like I can, I can feel all the way back to the cranes in my DNA. So we'll start with winter. I use this glass plate so I have a solid surface instead of, um, you know, getting tripped up in the grooves in the hardwood floor. So, that should do it. Now it's in the frame. so uh, what I'm going to do is add some blue, what I'm enjoying. Um, I try to decide as little as possible beforehand so that it's a fun adventure for me uh, to create and like an, uh, a journey somewhere I've never been before. So what I like is this blue primary color for winter. I decided to give an aura around this closest mountain range. I find um, I'm very attracted to, it feels natural to me to put auras around things. There's a lot of my art that has a glowing aura, which um, I didn't learn to do art in art classes. I learned by doing it. And in fact, I didn't learn anything in classes because my instincts were to go out into nature 
that's where I felt comfortable. I also saw as a little girl that, especially in my family, which I think is very universally true, there was a lot of confusion and unhappiness and alcoholism and drug addiction and all kinds of stuff that just seemed sad and confused. And I thought, you know, people uh, can be confused and unhappy where nature always seems to be, well, uh, uh, harmonious, even when there's drastic stuff. So I really like what that just did. It made this this closest mountain feel closer. Now I'm going to take the same concept with the spring and bring the green of spring a little closer by the sky I put on the outside of the mountain but the green I'm going to put on the inside of this ridge because that's where the spring growth would happen on the earth so it's inside instead of outside so nature has been my most cons consistent teacher and it is our home and we are part of nature we are nature and the more we are in harmony with it the healthier happier more equitable humanity us as individuals and as society so now we have the waterfall so the green will be outside the water where it gets plenty of water either side of this waterfall as the snow is melting and coming down from the mountain my mother who was classically trained and got a degree in fine art from the first college that offered that in Boston and grew up in Boston with her with her single aunt liberated aunt because she had asthma her her mother decided that she should move to the city instead of where her mother with her other siblings in more rural Massachusetts. So my mother grew up close to uh, the museum, which is an incredible collection of art. And my mother had, you know, bad asthma from very young in life. So she spent a lot of time at the library, in the museum, by herself studying. So she incredibly well-educated, sort of my opposite. Yes. Michael B. said, Boston grown here too. Nice. That's, uh, so now you, you have your honorary grandmother. Uh, my mother, you could, uh, you could get her picture from my studio and, and show Michael his honorary grandmother. If, if I'm your honorary mother, which I just gave myself that title because you called me mom, um, then here's your honorary. It's by my book. Okay. So that's my uh, mother's graduation picture from her fine art college. And uh, she consummately trained, um, always reassured me that I should uh, follow my, my own way. She said, you know, it, 
that technique didn't matter for me because I, I followed my heart and I worked until it was done and then I stopped. And she graduated from that school and worked in studios until she met my father and then had four kids. Um, and then she had um, to take care of kids and yeah. Wow, way cool. Love it. Great. Okay, so we're given a little green around these rock outcroppings in spring because spring is about life springing out of its winter dormant phase. So we're glowing up the green in spring. I'm going to give them a little bit of a close up. Yeah. Now, this furthest away. Uh, mountain there where it's too high for the spring to have gotten it green so we're going to leave it without the green glow and now we're going to move over to summer and summer we're going to do something different which is we're going to take one of my stencils and this grass and we're going to get a pencil and trace it. Okay. Okay. You're moving the other camera. So what I'm doing is I'm going to have. I've got the branch for winter, so I'm going to have a flower. Uh, I could do the flower if you've got the camera in the right place for that first, if you'd like. I just moved it. Okay. Well, then I will do the grass. Well, it is actually in the perfect place for the flower. Okay. Then we'll do the flower next. I'll move the plate back so I have a solid... Okay, so now I'm going to just trace, and then I can decide what color I want this iris to be. Let's see if I'm, it's pretty close to invisible to the it's working for the camera. Okay, great. So this is another way to use stencils to make your own composition if you want uh, from these stencils. And it's a way for us to, you know, use a design we already know we like. And it's also for those who may want the option of um, having a stencil to give us the confidence and to give us the flexibility of making our own composition from forms we know we like already. So anything that gives us a um, help, uh, incentive, inspiration or permission. Now we see that there are a lot of lines we need to fill out so we can do that.
The other thing that's cool about working this way is it's kind of like art yoga because we're stretching and moving. Instead of just sitting stiff at a desk. And so that's enough for right now, other than this one needs a little here. Okay. So there we use that stencil to put in a close flower and give some perspective. So each of the four seasons will get a botanical. Yes. And then I'm going to put the grass in here. Oops. We caught a little. What I need to do with this material, which is G clay, is um, use a little white glue to do the edge so that none of these, because it's like fabric on one side, as we can see, it's got a, it's kind of a version of canvas. It's fabric on one side and a, has a plastic back so that the pigment used on the front stays. Could you? Mm -hmm. Move the grass to the left a little bit, just by not having the dowels meet end to end. You see how these dowels are? Yes, I can do that. How's that? There you go. Does that work? Yes. So I'm very careful about not putting things right in the center, because that's um, not as lovely as off to one side or the other. Now these delicate lines were just basically, you know, we spent time designing this grass and we like it so we're using it as a template but we're going to make it our its own thing with colored pencil or gold paint we'll decide when we get there we'll make it its own unique expression even though the stencil is like a template. And you know, the quickest way to do this would be with the gold metallic paint. But I wanted to show you how we can use stencils as templates or as, um, you know, paint through them, which I've shown in a lot of videos. So this is another technique that it uh, felt right to show you at this point. Okay, so we did not add much, but that could be enough. And we will fill it out by hand drawing. And these, these botanicals, the evergreen, the flower, the grass, and the maple leaf are to be in the foreground and create a depth of field besides represent the botanical for each season. So now we're going to go, I want the one that's in there, so I'm going to put this back that I left out.
There we go. Now that feels more balanced, but we want another in there. Okay, now can we head over to the fall? By moving this further over and put in the maple. I could move this if you if you need me to. Yeah, did you put it where the yellow one is? Sure, you want to come on that side and first we'll pick up the yellow. Okay, and then we'll there we go. So we we'll just switch their placement. And now this is going to get the maple leaf or the maple branch. There we go. All right. The other cool thing about using stencils to compose art, whether it's on fabric for clothes or tablecloths or on walls, wherever we might use the stencil or art like this, is that we can move it around to get our composition the way we want it before we do it. Yes? Sumner Medicine said, the natural world is the best teacher. Thank you for all your marvelous art. Thank you, Sumner, and uh, thank you for your acknowledgement of me and of nature. And Sumner is an avian ecologist who's written a, a beautiful book on ecologists um, in the, I think, upper Midwest, Wisconsin mainly called A Field, uh, an award-winning book that has a lot of marvelous, wonderful people who care about the natural world and have worked to protect it and to promote living in harmony with it, which is something we all need. We are not independent of nature. We need it. It would thrive without us. But I like people, and I want us to thrive and survive. Um, so I'm hoping we can do the paradigm shift that's necessary to live in harmony with nature and to change our thinking about controlling it or mining it for our own advantage economically while going out of balance with it. So I'm hoping we can make that shift. I'm going to do some red in this, in this maple leaf so we can really see what I'm doing better. Can the camera see that? Yeah. So maple leaves are just a beautiful shape. And, but then again, is there anything in nature that I don't like, don't find beauty in? Slime. I have an aversion to the slime of slugs. It's true. I, I don't want to touch them. But I do think that they are marvelous creatures. I just don't want to touch them. But that's probably good. I also don't really like to touch snakes. Though I, my, one of my nephews I raised decided to get a bunch of snakes. So I've had a boa constrictor on my shoulders, but it didn't feel right. 
I feel like there's things in nature we should leave alone. Let them have their <laughs> their space. Of course, there's people I feel that way about too. Let give them their space. <laughs> One of the things while composing natural scenes. One of the things I think about is how, you know, nature has a beautiful uh, harmony that is not exact, and the brain wants to organize things and and quantify and and make everything even but in nature there's there's a beautiful balance that um is perfect in its randomness so that's something we human beings do you need to change the battery take the camera off of this to do that well we could um call it well, I mean, I can get close-ups with this. I'm, I'm seeing that. It's this one that's out of battery? Yeah. Okay. Well, you want to help me switch these back, and I'm going to do the yellow on this one then? Sure. Um, yeah, then we'll just get the, we'll continue the live stream with this for as yeah. long as you want to know. Okay, so we're going to... If you really want to get the camera on. Um, no, let's just switch these. All right. And... We'll put summer back after spring and before autumn where it belongs. And then we'll put some yellow in this. Well, we're going to do that gold because the yellow is not going to show up enough. I can see that immediately. So we're going to do that with gold, but not right now. So we're going to go over here back to the iris. And every piece of art is its own journey and exciting and fun to see where it goes. And so we have to be okay that we're not in control. We're, in my opinion, creativity flows through us. We don't control it. We can just guide it. Uh, it's like the ocean or the wind. And so we can let it flow through us. That's a wonderful feeling. And so, you know, I listen to TED Talks a lot, and they talk a lot of, there's a lot of TED Talks about the subject of um, flow and how stepping into flow helps our, increases our happiness. So I'm going to make the top part of this iris another green. Um, just because I want to, and I might add a different color. I'm liking the black and one of the primary colors for each of the seasons so far. That's not bright enough. So let's go for, let's go for you. Yeah. And I do what I feel is next. Um, and then I often step back and give it some time to land and walk away and look at it again with a fresh mind, some perspective. 
so I don't go too far in any one direction. Keep the lightness in it. And there we go. And the a wonderful thing about art. <laughs> so maybe we'll we'll give this a deeper yellow and then we can do that. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna move the plate back. Are we showing below this? I mean, are we showing summer? Yeah, that'll work. So besides that expressing our feelings stimulates our immune system, feeling stimulates thought, and being feeling free to explore and express is joy enhancing. Being in the flow is happiness increasing. And we all have a lot to deal with in the world, in our lives. So spending time in flow, spending time present while doing creative expression is healing and there is an epidemic of lack of contemplative time with all of the options for distraction that social media and all of the huge amount of uh, entertainment options for not being present. So we, in my opinion, it, it's healthy. Do we see all the way over to autumn? Yeah? yeah. Okay. I'm going to put a little branch in, and then so a balance to all the busyness that life has um, evolved into like being busy is a badge of honor or means you're important if people are busy all the time but truly we can only focus on one thing at a time and so being busy is the opposite of being present and it can uh, cause you know lots of lots of stress and lots of inefficiency so we can only be one place at a time so I find doing art time to get up so I find doing art uh, very meditative very brings me to the moment and so very serenity enhancing so we're going to leave it here for now, and we're going to continue it um, between now and the next live stream. But I will, I will video that so you can see it, and then um, we will keep sharing this project evolving. So that's uh, there's a comment. 
Joni B, good entertainment is so relaxing to me after a long state of flow. Nice, nice. Thank you for that. And yes, well, we can um, be in a state of flow even listening or watching someone else's creative process or the, what they've created in a movie or reading a book or listening to music or dancing to music. So other people have great ideas and great inspiration and uh, we can enjoy that as well as our own creativity and that keeps widening our perspective the more we do that, letting other people's ideas and their their perceptions in to combine with our own. So that's a beautiful thing to do. Creative collaboration, good, good storytelling, good sharing of uh, our different perspectives is, is beautiful connection and enhances the world. So thank you, Joni, for that. And uh, I think, um, I think we, we took essence of everything to the next level very gently. And this is how I like to work is then get up and walk away. So I don't overwork it, which my, my brilliant and classically trained artist mother told me when I was young and started expressing my creativity that I was unusual among artists that, that many artists, if not most artists overwork things and it's easy to do. And, you know, we get into the, we get into the flow and sometimes we can lose perspective. So, uh, getting up and stretching out and walking away and coming back is good for us and good for the art. So hopefully there's something here that you enjoy and someone that you'd like to share it with. And we really appreciate the, the comments, the likes, the subscribes, the shares. Uh, like I said, we're doing grassroots growing this and it's really, um, it's, it's really, well, heartwarming, uh, to see how we can just be ourselves in this world and share what makes us happy. And it feels so gratifying when other people appreciate it and share it. And so thank you so much. All right. And thank you, Bodhi, for all your technical expertise and assistance. And, you know, we're a team, all of us. We're all on the same team, team human, team earth. Yeah. Michael B. loved the stream. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Thanks for being here and see you guys on Monday at noon. And you can see any and all of these after on the Creativity Show channel on YouTube. You can share them with uh, uh, or watch them again anytime after if you can't be here for the live streams. Um, so thank you for being here. All righty. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.